Welcome to the AVI series installation and adjustment training video. The AVI series is an easy to install, no maintenance solution for instruments and applications requiring low frequency, active vibration isolation. With its low profile and modular design, the AVI series makes it easy for researchers to perform installations in under an hour without the requirement of lifting equipment. This tutorial video reviews the installation procedures for every AVI series platform, outlining each step of the installation and adjustment process. Once the instrument has been positioned on the AVI series platform, the internal springs will work to compensate for the load. In order for the active vibration isolation technology within the AVI series to function correctly, the load bearing springs need to be adjusted to allow for the AVI series to float the instrument. Floating the instrument means the crossbar spanning the width of the AVI module is not touching the top or bottom of the central column. The crossbar should be adjusted so that the gap above and below the crossbar is greater than the vibration amplitudes from the floor. Ideally, you will want the crossbar to be as close to the center of the central column as possible. Please note, the surface area in which the AVI modules and instrument are placed must be rigid and flat adhering to the AVI series floor flatness specification for optimal active vibration isolation. Some instruments and applications may be provided with an aluminum base plate to ensure this specification has been met. If an aluminum base plate has not been provided and the AVI modules are placed on a table or the floor within a room, please ensure the floor flatness specification has been met. Not adhering to this specification may impede proper adjustment of the AVI springs and overall vibration isolation performance. In order to adjust the load bearing springs, you will need to remove the front facing panel found on the AVI module. To remove the front facing panel of the AVI module, use the provided hex key to rotate the hex nut counterclockwise. Make sure both hex nuts are removed in order to access the AVI load bearing springs. Once the front facing panel has been removed, you can access the AVI springs. Using the provided wrench, adjust all springs by rotating the adjustment nut either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the effect of the instrument's weight on the springs. Rotating the adjustment nut clockwise will compress the AVI spring, driving the crossbar upwards along the central column. Rotating the adjustment nut counterclockwise will uncompress the AVI spring driving the crossbar downwards along the central column. The modules are considered to be properly adjusted once the crossbar is floating between the top and bottom portion of the central column. If the crossbar is too high and is resting at the top of the central column, you'll need to decrease the spring tension by rotating the adjustment nut clockwise. If the crossbar is too low and is resting at the bottom of the central column, you'll need to increase the spring tension by rotating the adjustment nut counterclockwise. Please note, do not exceed a 13 mm gap between the springs and the crossbar as this will result in damage to the AVI module. Once the AVI modules have been properly adjusted to account for the instrument weight, the next step is to connect the modules to the AVI controller. Each AVI module has a specific number of D-sub cables needing to be connected to the AVI controller. Connect one end of the D-sub cable to the input found on the AVI module the other end of the D-sub cable to the input found on the AVI controller. Please make sure all cables have been properly connected before turning on the AVI platform. The modules and controller will be labeled to understand which connection needs to be made. Once the D-sub cables are connecting the AVI modules and controller, connect the power cable found on the back of the AVI controller to a power outlet within the room. Power on the AVI controller by pressing the front red power button. The green power indicator light will now turn on and the red module indicator lights will begin to flicker. These lights demonstrate the impact of vibrations present on the AVI sensors, which will go away once the active isolation component of the AVI platform has been enabled. After 30 seconds of powering on the AVI controller, press the black button to enable the active isolation component of the AVI platform. The yellow indicator light will now stay permanently on indicating the AVI platform is actively isolating. 
Tapping on the top plate of the AVI platform tests the responsiveness of the AVI sensors and their ability to isolate the experienced vibrations. All red module indicator lights should remain off when not being excited. If red module indicator lights remain on or begin to persistently flicker, please contact Herzan to discuss next steps in the setup or repair process. We at Herzan want to thank you for choosing the AVI series as your active vibration isolation solution. If you have any questions following the video, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time.